Hi everybody, I'm Naufal. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss regarding Hirschsprung disease or congenital aganglionic megacolon. Hirschsprung's disease or congenital aganglionic megacolon. Okay. Hirschsprung disease also known as congenital aganglionic megacolon. So in the name itself, congenital that is by birth. Aganglionic that means absence of ganglion cells. Megacolon. Colon means large intestine. So, mega colon that means big colon or big intestine. Okay. So, by birth due to absence of ganglionic cells, the colon is becoming mega colon or big colon. That is Hirschsprung's disease or congenital aganglionic mega colon. So, usually ganglion cells are present in rectum. Okay. Usually ganglion cells are present in rectum. For some children by birth ganglion cells in rectum will be absent. So, this ganglion cells in rectum is helping for peristaltic movement. So, what is peristaltic movement? It is a wave like movement which help to move the food and fluids from one part to another part of the digestive tract. Okay. The food and fluid is moving from one part to another part with the help of peristaltic movement. For rectum, ganglionic cells are helping for the peristaltic movement. For some children, by birth, ganglion cells will be absent in rectum. So, we know peristaltic movement is occurring in large intestine also. So, in the large intestine, stool will be there or the fecal matter or the stool will be there in the large intestine. Right? So, first of all, you should know regarding the anatomy of the large intestine. So, you will get a better idea regarding Hirschsprung's disease. Okay. So, in Hirschsprung disease, usually the part of the large intestine first you should know the part of the large intestine this part okay this part is ascending colon this part is ascending colon this part is transverse colon this part is descending colon and from here it is sigmoid colon then here it is rectum then anal opening clear starting ascending up it is going ascending colon then it is transverse transverse colon next part is descending colon then it is sigmoid colon this part sigmoid colon and this part will be rectum clear so here also what will happen in the large intestine stool will be there from the ascend small intestine it will reach to the ascending colon then the stool will move to the transverse colon then the stool will move to the descending colon then it will move to the sigmoid colon with the help of peristaltic movement but here till sigmoid colon the stool will reach but in the rectum in the part of the rectum ganglion cells are absent so there is no peristaltic movement the stool will not move to the rectum because there is no ganglion cells. The stool will accumulate in the sigmoid colon. The stool will accumulate in the sigmoid colon and the sigmoid colon will become big colon that is mega colon. The sigmoid colon will become big colon or mega colon due to accumulation of stool because there is no peristalsis movement in the rectum area ganglionic cells are the uh, ganglion cells are absent clear now what will happen after childbirth usually the child will pass the normal child will pass meconium what is meconium meconium is the first stool okay the child will pass meconium normal child will pass meconium but in Hirschsprung's disease there is no peristaltic movement. Okay. So, usually the child will pass the meconium. The normal child will pass the meconium. 
within 24 hour to 48 hour normal child will pass the meconium first stool within 24 hour to 48 hour but in this case that is congenital aganglionic megacolon case child will not pass the meconium or child will not pass the stool within first 48 hours he will not pass the stool within 48 hours this condition is called Hirschsprung's disease or congenital aganglionic megacolon okay due to the absence of ganglionic cells in the rectum the stool will not move from the rectum the stool will be accumulated in the sigmoid colon and the colon will become megacolon and delay in passing meconium will occur that is called Hirschsprung's disease so what is the clinical manifestation of the Hirschsprung's disease it is delay in passing meconium delay in passing meconium is the clinical manifestation of Hirschsprung's disease okay so after 48 hour in, within 24 to 48 hour normal baby will pass the meconium in Hirschsprung's disease case after 48 hour again the stool is coming from the ascending colon then to the transverse colon then to the descending then to the sigmoid colon now the sigmoid colon is accumulated with stool right now due to the pressure from the sigmoid colon due to the pressure from the sigmoid colon after few days after few days the child will pass the stool okay after few days due to the pressure because so much stool will be accumulated in the sigmoid colon okay so due to that pressure after few days the child will pass the stool that is the meconium so the child will pass the stool that is ribbon like stool very very important for you okay the child will pass ribbon like stool the child will pass ribbon like stool for your exam repeatedly this question is asking ribbon like stool that is Hirschsprung's disease or congenital aganglionic megacolon okay now regarding the confirmatory test to confirm the disease it is rectal biopsy rectal biopsy is the confirmatory test so in the rectal biopsy absence of ganglionic cells absence of ganglion cells will be there okay that is present okay absence of ganglion cell that is the confirmatory test in the rectal biopsy is the confirmatory test what you can see absence of ganglion cells clear now regarding the management management it is surgical management surgical management is the management of the uh, congenital aganglionic megacolon that is removing the affected part removing where the ganglionic cell is absent and anastomosis with the unaffected part anastomosis that is making a connection with the unaffected part okay removing the affected part removing the effect if this part is affected removing that part and making a anastomosis making a connection with the unaffected part okay that is the surgical management that's all regarding Hirschsprung's disease we'll meet soon with another video till that time thank you and goodbye